Thank you. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here to present to you today. Um, today, I'm going to follow on from some of the positive sentiments that were expressed by Deputy Prime Minister Isakeshev this morning. And I'll be doing that by talking about the potential of Kazakhstan to attract significant exploration investment and grow into a future hub. However, I will finish this presentation with, with a word of caution and, uh, and really a dose of reality. Here on my opening slide, I've got a sample of copper ore, and I'll refer to copper as an example throughout this presentation. This is due not only to the fact that copper is a significant target, and in fact the main target of Rio Tinto in Kazakhstan, but it's also due to the fact that copper is a relatively stable uh, commodity with respect to price, and that allows it to be a good proxy for overall exploration trends. This is the normal disclaimer. Uh, I'm sure you're pretty familiar with this. You see them at all, lots of these conferences. Uh, I will point out to you that this presentation may contain forward-looking statements. Uh, if you've got any questions on those, please see me afterwards. So the question, why do we actually explore, is a fundamental part of the topic that I'm going to talk about today. Global supply and demand trends, as in this example for copper, show decreasing supply due to mine closures and due to declining grades on those deposits. This trend is mirrored in Kazakhstan across all major commodities, and we've heard about that several times today. Exploration for new resources is important. It's important for the future sustainable growth of Rio Tinto, but it also provides resource security for the host country in which we operate. To put it very simply, mining is an important part of any country's economy, and as existing operations get older and less profitable, new deposits need to be brought into production. Over the years, Kazakhstan has been able to do this successfully using resources that are on the state balance from historic exploration. And deposits such as Bozshakul or Aktagai in the copper world are the next in line for development and production. But I ask the question, what will come after those? It's my assessment that there are no large deposits left on the balance that are easy and waiting to be developed. I'm in no way saying that Bozshakul or Aktagai are easy deposits. And in fact, these are very technically challenging deposits as we're seeing with uh, Kazakhmys' uh, development projects at the moment. So if we want to fill the production gap that will be left as deposits become older and the grades decline, and if Kazakhstan really wants to continue to be a major copper producer, it must conduct exploration or it must attract exploration investment. Exploration budgets are globally under pressure. Again, Deputy Prime Minister Isakeshev this morning mentioned the global economy and the stress that some of the mining and exploration companies are under. Companies have limited budgets to invest, and funding is directed to the best opportunities in markets that provide the best framework for the exploration investment and subsequent development of discoveries. So what does this actually do for us? It, it creates an effective competition between regions to attract exploration dollars. Up on the slide here, I've listed some of the criteria that I personally believe are important to attract and sustain exploration investment. Geological potential is obviously a key thing, but curiously, it's not the only thing when companies are evaluating our uh, areas and districts. In addition, we have access to data. We have a stable legal framework, attractive fiscal conditions. We've got issues around stability and risk, issues around corruption and transparency, the ability to convert discoveries that have been made by the investor into operations, and the availability of staff and contractors, again, something that's been highlighted a number of times today. 
What is also important, the presence of strong partners and, of course, good infrastructure. So what I thought I would do is to try and actually score Kazakhstan against these criteria. I hasten to add this is my personal opinion, okay? But I hope you'll see that I've been fair uh, to the country. So the geological potential is good. There's no doubting that. But access to data, to know what op opportunities out there, is a negative. We have a stable framework. Okay, within a, a fiscal climate and, uh, and, and political risk issues that are basically neutral at the moment. Corruption is an issue, and we shouldn't avoid saying that. And the ability to convert discoveries to mines, it's not 100% guaranteed in the current legislation. We've got a lack of skilled technical staff, but we've got a lot of good contractors. And finally, the partners and the infrastructure, as things stand, I think we can rate as being neutral. So all in all, when I look at that, I say not too good, not too bad, okay? Uh, but it's not enough to really grow the exploration sector significantly. So what has this meant for Kazakhstan? Well, this is the latest uh, published tenure map uh, for Kazakhstan. Here you can see that really there are relatively few active, active contracts, and in particular, if you actually take some of, the, uh, some of this data and, and look at it in detail, there are very few early stage exploration contracts. As a sort of graphic statistic, this actually works out to be less than 5% of the country is currently being explored for, for minerals. And, and that's just not enough for the potential of a, of a country like Kazakhstan. So if we look at it another way, and, and this is a very famous data set uh, from the Metals Economics Group, uh, and they publish an annual survey on non-ferrous exploration strategies. I'm sure some of you may have seen me refer to this data before, and interestingly, in a speech earlier this year, President Nazarbayev also referred to this data when he too observed that Kazakhstan was not explored enough. The survey itself took in 2,556 companies for 2012. And that was a total global exploration budget in excess of $20 billion. Of these companies, only 26 have a declared budget for Kazakhstan. And that budget total is $217 million. So when we think about it, we think, actually, that's not too bad. $217 million, you can do a lot of exploration damage with that. But when you actually go in and remove the exploration that's done on mine sites, mine site evaluation, and the exploration for advanced projects, and leave yourself only with the grassroots budget, that provides you a budget of only $34 million. As a comparison, I like to use Chile because it's a, I believe that geologically it's a great proxy for where Kazakhstan should be uh, globally. And in Chile, $354 million was spent on grassroots exploration. And that's even worse when you look at it as investment per square kilometer. We all know Kazakhstan is a huge country. And, and so when you look at that, basically you get a, a view that Kazakhstan is significantly underexplored. And that's underexplored by modern companies and modern technologies. So when I go to, back to that scorecard, I thought it might be interesting for me to rate Chile. It's somewhere that I've visited many times, and in fact, somewhere that I've worked. So what do we find? We find, actually, a much more attractive picture. Okay? And this is what Kazakhstan is competing with to secure exploration investment. So if you listen up until now, I think a very natural question is, why is Rio Tinto in Kazakhstan? Well, I hope that what I can go on and tell you now is a view, and Rio Tinto's view, about the positive features of Kazakhstan, the change that is being planned, and where we hope the country will go. 
So firstly, geological potential. This is a map of major copper porphyry deposits, and it's plotted against the cumulative duration of tectonic subduction. That's a technical term for where do we think the best places for porphyry copper deposits are around the world. So it's a very simple method, and, and really the areas here shown in red and yellow are the places around the world for porphyry uh, formation. When we zoom into Central Asia, okay, we can see large amounts of these complex belts, and these belts should host porphyry deposits. But in reality, there's a relative lack of actual deposits. The geological conditions are right, and it's our belief that there are more discoveries to be made. Talking to one of my colleagues from Satanco earlier on today, he raised the question of, of are we looking for a deposit like Oyu Tolgoi from Mongolia in Kazakhstan? And I said, absolutely, we are. And I, in fact, I made him a personal promise that I believe that there is a new deposit of a scale similar to Oyu Tolgoi to be discovered here in Kazakhstan. So I said earlier that geological potential isn't everything. So what about the other issues? Well, we heard a lot of this from uh, Deputy Prime Minister Isakeshev earlier, and also from the Committee of Geology. There are some very strong initiatives that have been announced that we believe will make a step change in the climate of Kazakhstan. This has started with the integrated strategy for exploration and mining sector, and that is being followed uh, by amendments to the subsoil use law. I've been here now for three years, and this is a process that takes time. In fact, I remember Vice Minister Rao kicked off this initiative with the World Bank uh, back uh, at least three, four years ago. And this is a process that is now ready to bear fruit uh, for, for Kazakhstan. So the amendments really uh, started out as a series of changes to make legislation more efficient and attractive. But recently, we've heard comments from Prime Minister Akhmetov that we need to make major changes to the legislation. And these sorts of comments show that we've got senior government commitment to changing the mining sector and the exploration sector for the better. The current review of access to, to geological data is also symbolic of this positive change. And the ability to be able to actually select the targets and the areas that investors want to go and work on is critical uh, to really invigorate this sector. Then there is the development of the School of Mines at Nazarbayev University, partnered with the Colorado School of Mines. And this will implement an education strategy to develop the next generation of geologists, engineers, and metallurgists. I think it's very important to note that in, in, the, in the meetings and the round tables that I've sat in directly related to this subject, this also integrates an education strategy for Kazakhstan. It talks about the technical colleges at places like Semipalatinsk, the, the universities in Karaganda, in Uskamanogorsk, in Almaty. So this is not a simple uh, strategy just to grow the Nazarbayev University but more to integrate the overall educational structure for engineers, for geologists, for metallurgists, and build that foundation to support the future of the mining sector. I was also very fortunate to be in Australia just a couple of weeks back with my colleagues from Kaz Geology and Vice Minister Sorumbayev. And at that time, Kazakhstan was accepted onto the board of the EITI, the Extractive Industry Transparency Initiative. And this is a major step forward to improve the transparency, to reduce corruption. And this is further being strengthened with the appointment of non-executive directors onto the boards of state companies to improve corporate governance and, in and increase transparency. The infrastructure of Kazakhstan is improving every year with both traditional infrastructure projects, such as road, rail, and power, 
but also exploration in infrastructure in the form of laboratories and, plan and the planned geological center of excellence that we've heard about today. And finally, clearly defined strategies for CAS geology and for Tauken Samruk are, are beginning to emerge that are providing strong partners for investors. So what does that give us? Okay, I wanted to circle back to our scorecard, but at this time, I'm gonna do a little bit of a look to the future. So if we go ahead and implement those things I've just talked about, I'm sure you'll agree this is a far more healthy picture. Okay, we've moved on, the potential hasn't changed. It's still very, very strong. We've increased the access to data. This has moved this more into a neutral environment because it will take a long time for full disclosure of geological data. We've looked at increasing transparency, reducing corruption through the initiatives of the EITI. We've uh, addressing the problem of shortage of skilled staff, and we've now and we're moving our partners up into a positive, uh, uh, attractive part of the Kazakh infrastructure. But I said at the beginning, I'm going to finish with a note of caution and a dose of reality. This will not happen overnight. Changes take time to convert into increased investment, and exploration takes time to deliver new discoveries. If Kazakhstan is serious about the proposed changes, it will need to demonstrate a sustained commitment to change, and only this will safeguard the future of the mining sector. Thank you for your attention.